Welcome to the Echo Chamber, of course, powered by the Elgato Wave. If you'd like to ask any of our guests today any sort of questions, make sure you drop them in chat. We're going to be having some QA at the end as we're going through it. The, the other biggest thing that really stuck to me was the reaction that you guys had. We also have a clip of this, too, because it's not only the reaction for finally killing the boss in Black Rock Hold, where you guys went the distance, went a full five games, but also realizing and waiting for the admins to tell you that you had won. Yeah, so we knew we were like behind and somehow we did, we, the admin say you won and I don't know, we didn't know what to say. We just... <laughs> just really lost it. Yeah, we had like the, the just slight moment. I guess, did you have the admin screen for like Discord or was it in game? Here we go. You can just see the slight movement, the flex, and then just the explosion. <laughs> I love this. So tell me, was it something in Discord specifically that it's, you uh, saw or in game, was it like in, in chat? In, 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 in game chat, yeah. Okay. I love that. I love that. Did Discord itself just explode as everybody was cheering? Wait, was all of your team just exploding in Discord as everybody was cheering oh, uh, and everybody was so excited? Yeah, I think we have the North Scream. Uh, we <laughs> probably have a clip somewhere. Uh, but yeah, like we, for like maybe 30 good seconds, we just scream saying random things uh, it was amazing i love it well congratulations and this was really the most competitive mdi i think we've ever had at this point and some insanely like thrilling tech that was also sort of coming along to the table so dorky we have another clip uh we just have to show everybody for <laughs> your guys's speed boosts Can you talk about it, how you found this out, experimented with this. How many times were you actually successful in practice? Because it also wasn't always successful in the tournament. Yeah, well, this one was a pretty exciting one. So we were kind of just on break, messing around. Like we saw that one team do the rocket boot to quickly get through to the portal. And it was smacked in our team, our Shadow Priest player, who was just like messing around. And he found out that you could just like fly off the edge and go to the other side of the map. So he was like, wait, this is actually even a bigger time save. So we were like, wait, so how do we do this? And it's actually much trickier than it seems because on broadcast, it looked like all you had to do was just have slow fall or levitate, right? Or flap. Right. But if you put levitate on the person before you hit your rocket boots, you're not going to get any mo movement speed at all. But... If you had both levitate and slow fall and you canceled one of them while you were in the rocket boot for some reason you would just get the full speed so that's like something we cooked up and it was pretty cool i mean it was actually not as big of a time save as it should have been since we didn't actually like go quick with it like we kind of just like went up went on the platform and we were like all right come on let's just like take it a little bit slow because like now that we're doing it it now that we're doing it live we wanted to make sure that it worked for right. sure but it did end up saving us some time and we did end up winning the match because of it. I was going to say, because we there are even some times where you guys had some deaths and still, I mean, the graveyard was right there after you got through the portal. So it wasn't too punishing if mistakes were also being made. Right, right. Worst case scenario, the person who has their rocket boots fail, they just jump off and just release afterwards. Mm hmm. So how did that kind of play into your tournament strategy with some of the cadence that you like the dungeons that you knew you were going to be going against and how did that help you determine which dungeons you wanted to ban? Are you talking about for that specific strategy? Well, for us specifically. It's kind of in, kind of in general for it's like when you're general, looking at yeah, all the games see. you might be playing, whether you're going to lower bracket or upper bracket, what dungeons do you want to practice? Because there are a right, few right. different dungeons like you're banning Everbloom, uh, banning Fall, I believe as well uh, against Legendary. Yeah, for us, we saw what maps we had to play the most. Mm -hmm. Like, Front of the Tides, for example, we only saw two times throughout the entire tournament. So we figured, like, ah, oh, it's not that worth spending that much time in Front of the Tides. And Everbloom was the other one where we, like, could have chosen to focus ban that map. It would have been nice to like have something ready for them. Like like we definitely had something for Everbloom and from the tides, but we definitely didn't spend as much time as we would have liked compared to the other dungeons. 
Were there any dungeons mirrors that you guys had where you wanted to spend more time on? Because you also had some incredibly innovative strategies. I mean, we were looking at like Black Rook Hold with like summons being used, Snap Tech being used. Any dungeons you think were your favorite throughout this or that you would have wanted to practice more? Uh, I mean, not necessarily practice, I guess, only play it. Like pra practiced, we, we, we completely gave up on fall because it was a horrible dungeon for um, <laughs> all it was. Yeah, because Bro. there was nothing to do in the dungeon. We just said we don't need it. So we didn't practice fall at all. I think everyone knew as well. I mean, if you scout the tournament realm a little bit, we know that mandatory was not playing Everbloom at all. So it was quite easy. Everyone knows, of course, like what team bans what map, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, so we were like, okay, it makes sense. They ban Everbloom, we ban fall. We kind of know the series ahead of time. So it was all good. But in general, I think the map that we would have liked to play more is DHD because, uh, of course, we did play DHD in Grand Finals and it went wrong, but we had uh, by far the best DHD in terms of snaps, technology developed, basically. Um, and it was really cool and it always worked, but then some unfortunate stuff happened, of course, like always in, in snaps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in general, I think DHD, we would have loved to play more or show more. And yeah, that, that, I think that, that that's the map, yeah. So I'm glad you mentioned the Dark Heart Thicket. So this was going into game four of the Grand Finals. Echo, you guys were up two games. Mandatory, if you had lost, Amazing, if you'd lost in that Dark Heart Thicket, it would have been all over. Was there any little bit of fear in your mind? Because you guys didn't have a flawless run either. If I'm not mistaken, your Dark Heart Thicket in the Grand Finals was like 30 or 40 seconds slower than in your matchup versus Perplex here. You guys pulled, what, Double Keeper? How did that happen? The double keepers uh, that got pulled leading up to the uh, the tree boss, second boss. So we actually planned to play this keeper on the boss, but I don't know, we are just slow because of the stress, probably. Okay. Uh, like we felt good going 1-0 into, into the best of five. Then we lost two match in a row and we were like, I don't know, a bit shaky. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's probably why we are that slow. But uh, obviously, like... Echo route was so much faster than us uh, if they did it perfectly. So was there ever any of that moment of fear when you realized you weren't going as fast and you could kind of take realize that things were taking a little longer than they should have? Did you feel like the fear in anybody's voice as they were going through it? Uh, um, well, we had the broadcast on the second screen, so we knew a bit that they had some issues uh, in, in the first bus. So... Like we are still confident in winning, at least. Awesome. Yeah, and your your team has been together for what well over two years at this point. Did you guys really enter mm -hmm. this tournament with any sort of different mindset or any sort of different practice schedule? Uh, we try to practice a bit more than usual, uh, but I think we might go back on that a bit. Uh, at least we did for globals. I think practicing too much is not good. Um, so maybe like 12 hours max uh, instead of <laughs> only 15. <laughs> yeah, I actually only. wanted to ask about that. Like, I, I've been hearing from a lot of people that every single one of you guys, like there's just so many of you teams who are practicing 14 plus hours a day. And my team didn't believe it because like my team was all like, ah, there's no way they're playing 14 plus hours a day. They're just bluffing. And I'm like, I don't know. Everyone I've been hearing from is saying like they're doing 14 hours, 15 hours. Because we were kind of... It made us look kind of like we were slacking and, you know, maybe in hindsight, it's not really slacking. Like how much of those 14 hours did you guys feel like was valuable? Did you guys feel like bumping up the hours was actually um, good for the practice or was it like you just had kind of bad practice towards the end? Yeah, I feel like towards the end, you have no, not efficient practice and you might as well just go watch the, the VOD of today to like improve for tomorrow and just go sleep, right? Um, so, yeah. Not efficient practice, and it's better to like focus more on less practice hours and do it more efficient. So, how was everybody's practice schedule, or what was everybody's day to day throughout the tournament itself, Miras? When you guys finished day one, how much of it was discussion afterwards, additional practice versus just going to bed and getting your rest? Mm, I mean, most of the time, how we do it is that we play the first match. And then you obviously have a, either a break or you play again until the next day, right? Depends on what day or what series you play or win. And most of the time we always play and then we um, take a break for the next series. We watch it and eat during it most of the time. 
and like discuss a little bit what we're gonna do or like i mean that plan most of the time stands already but we just look at it and then you kind of look at interesting matches during the day you watch it maybe with the team and otherwise you practice uh, whatever you have planned for the next day yeah. um yeah and i wanted to answer doki's question as well for the practice i was actually really surprised because we upped the practice hours to like 14 uh, hours every day 14 to 15. Uh, i mean we never did 15 i think that was very rare but most of the time 14. Um, and then we cut down a little bit to 13 hours at one point and uh, actually we did have uh, in the beginning most of the time a little bit sl slow start on the day and we actually rammed towards the end and we had like really good runs at 2 3 a.m often times yeah um, and we started at 1 p.m um but yeah uh, it, it, this was completely different i think the last mdis where we had really bad it was really good at the beginning and really bad in the end this was just different this time i guess yeah um, but it I is probably too saying. much, uh, I, I agree. I think yeah. every team should relax a little bit, okay? Because we only started playing this much because mandatory started playing this much, by the way. Oh, that's true. <laughs> true. Yeah. Oh, the arms yeah. race. Be because this is like the race with first. When yeah. the one guild does 12 volts and you sit at 10, you know, something feels bad. And mandatory, like in the previous MDIs, I also speak with the perplexed a lot. We're like, man, they're playing the whole day and we're just having 10 hours schedule and they're online 13 hours, 12 hours per day. We're like, man, this is really um, like the draining on, you feel like you're missing out a little bit. So everyone upped it now. I think Perplex also up to 12 to 14 hours per day um, during the during the season. And I, it was, the, I, I mean, I, I think it's too much. Yeah, We should all relax a little bit yeah. and go to like, <laughs> max, go, go max like max 10 12. to 12. <laughs> max 10 to there 12. There you guys. go. It's too much, yeah. Well, we'll start yeah. kicking people off of the tournament realm at a certain point. But what else was really feeling different about this MDI? Obviously, Dorky, we know there was the highest competition we've ever had. Is there anything that felt especially different for your team as you entered this setup, this tournament? So for my team specifically, we had a lot of first timers. Drogo yeah. and Goop haven't competed before. And I would say like for me personally, I feel like this RNG has been I mean, like, most of our MDIs are like this, where they're very, like, RNG, and there's, like, a lot of elements of, like, just BS. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I swear it feels like there's, like, so many moments where it's, like, any dumb thing can happen, wherever it's, like... Like a coin flip. Yeah, it's, like, the Rise RNG, for example, right? Like, everyone knew about that. And there's also just, like, sometimes mobs just don't snap properly. Sometimes there's, like, spots where mobs evade. Sometimes there's, uh, your one of your players that is not a mage can get picked by soul forns 10 times in a row yep. and it feels like there are just so <laughs> many elements of just like rng in this mdi i don't know if, how you guys feel about it but i swear it feels like it's a little bit more extra this time wasn't there some rng with chromie as well yeah i think that's what, what, what the, exactly? is the, the the rise rp yeah oh yes, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah right so can you explain how that works I mean, it's actually really easy. <laughs> it's just you go to the last boss portal and either it's 10 seconds slower or 10 seconds faster. It's uh, the, it's actually that easy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, and, we're opening uh, the portal itself. And, and sadly, to experience that. Yeah, sadly, we have uh, reported it. I mean, I've personally reported it for a month or even longer, I think. And we said it will be an issue. And of course, it didn't change. Like, it did change something. There were also other issues, of course. But for example, we had slow RP in the rise that we lost in the upper finals, where mandatory had fast RP. And if you just look at how it played out and you just swap the RP around, basically you would have won. Yeah? And it's obviously really weird that this is a thing. Of course, there was other issues down the drain, like that could have swung it in any way with combat and like a lot of other issues, don't get me wrong. But I think these elements or soul thorns as well, random 20 second longer boss fight because the mage doesn't get it. Yeah. A really disaster in in terms of competitive play when it's only about speed, right? If it's about high, in high keys, I mean whatever. Then the ten seconds are probably not going to matter in a thirty-five minute run. But uh, when it's about three seconds in a lot of runs, it's uh, very weird that this happens. Yeah, and talking about some of the snap tech, when where were we getting into the point where you approach the dungeon and you started looking at how are we going to be able to snap these mobs, Dorky? How are we going to be able to set them up? Where did you guys first start putting those ideas together in practice? And then how easily or hard was it to actually replicate it consistently in practice? Yeah, snaps are always tricky. I mean, personally, I'm not a huge fan of trying to like 
do snaps unless they are consistent and really really give you an edge because mm -hmm. like for example the, the black rook hold tech we actually had that idea too during cups like we had that idea of like what if we just snap all the mobs from you know after Elisana to smash bite and we, we've tried like you know multiple different ways we've done very similar with like mass root all the mobs and then drop a flame sigil and take a summon and all that stuff but we couldn't get it consistent so we never really like stuck with that plan until we saw uh, Meris and them do it in the global finals uh, they like you know put in the spots and then like it's a very specific spot and then i saw them stand in a specific spot in smash bites room and i'm like wait you know, if this works consistently and like like we were able to like really quickly take this strategy since like we've somewhat practiced it beforehand and yeah like generally it's there's like there's a couple other situations where we've tried snaps but for the most part we don't think too much on it like in front of the tides you could also like snap some mobs and do a bunch of cool things but yeah like i try not to mess too much with it unless we know we can get it consistent yeah i think we've had a Especially over the years, the MDI, I, mean, I always remember in like BFA, I think it was like Shrine of the Storms had just some of like the nastiest uh, possible bugs that could happen or mobs just sitting there locking you in combat forever that you couldn't quite play around. So Yeah, or like evading and sometimes yeah. they can come. We, we had a lot of that. I think it was especially in fall, right, where some of the mobs were just straight evading. And Mason, Mason were you a victim of some of the, the melees from the mobs just evading and then coming back to haunt you? Thankfully, only in, on, in practice, um, ah. and we didn't get to play full at all, so <laughs> that's good. Yeah, but yeah it, like just it's RNG. Like sometimes one mob gets stuck in nothing, and then everything evades, and you just wipe. <laughs> yeah, and they also did announce that there's going to be TGP coming around. Is there is there hope that Dawn is just gone in particular because of the RNG that seems to be centric in that dungeon, or what do you guys think? I mean, I think yeah. Dawn would just be gone because not in the like it's in the current season dungeon pool, right? Yeah, uh, I yeah. thought they were saying it was Dragonflight, but I wasn't sure if that meant they were going to ban Dawn itself. I'm, I mean, did if they anything, say that for sure? That, that's why I wasn't sure about. That. That's what. Oh no, no, they did. They didn't say anything particular, okay. right? It was just a guess from previous seasons, I guess, right? Where they mm -hmm. just didn't reuse the the dungeon that they introduced in the patch before. But right. I don't know. If anything, I pray fall is not in both dungeons. Very <laughs> horrible, in my opinion. <laughs> yep. That dungeon stinks. And so, if you, no, sorry, just one thing. And if if there's actually a TGP coming up, and the viewers have to suffer a ten minute Iridicron boss fight in TGP, I, I mean, bless with everyone. To be honest, yeah, there's, uh, <laughs> I don't know, TGP yeah. high key fall is like the, I, I don't even know what to say. Yeah, it's uh, crazy. Yeah, and. <laughs> I'm just thinking about my own experience with 10 minute Eridicron fights. But for the side of mandatory Air Mace Dean, you guys decided to ban Everbloom straight out. You guys didn't have to thankfully deal with many falls or really fall at all. But so, so was it just looking at your setup of not having to worry about those dungeons that you decided to ban Everbloom? Uh, so we saw that we could ban Everbloom in every match. So we yeah. were like, okay, it's bursting and time travel was kind of rough for us in bursting a problem so we just banned it and call it a day <laughs> we spent no practice at all in a problem and i think it was a good choice yeah yeah i think us basically because we were in the same yeah. bracket so like we had the same map pools where like we didn't have to play ever at all interesting and so echo as well mirrors they were banning throne of the tides or something specifically about that dungeon or just also the pacing of like what dungeons you're expecting down the line to have to play mm, i mean no we set on f perma banning fall basically and the only time we could have played fall i think was a lower bracket game nine when we would have lost against eclipse and uh, we were co very confident to not lose so we were like okay we can ban it and if we would have lost, we obviously would have spent the day practicing uh, in fall for the next day. I thought but, you guys had uh, Throne of the Tides yeah. banned for versus Eclipse and in the Grand Finals. Oh yeah, that was the flex maps basically, because in okay. that, those matchups there was no fall and we just banned whatever map we felt like we either want to hide or we are not confident in or it's a little bit RNG or whatever. Yeah, that was kind of the 
idea of the flex ban, but we had four gotcha. less uh, perma ban. Uh, okay. In the matches. So why was it thrown to the tides for the grand finals? You guys wanted to ban. Because uh, uh, like thrown, we were uh, how's it called? First of all, it was the last match in the grand finals. Okay. So we were like, okay, we have. Uh, we were looking at the match, but we were like, rice. That's a 50-50, Either mandatory or us wins. Then Atal, we knew we had a really fast Atal. We also knew they had a really good Atal. So it was also a little bit 50-50, but we were very confident in our Atal because we also changed some things going into Grand Finals, basically, like we spent after we lost. In the Atal against the Mandatory, we changed some things and then we got a little bit better. Um, so we were confident in that. Then Vakris, we knew we would win uh, after seeing Mandatory's uh, Vakris, of course. And then we knew, technically, if nothing would go wrong, we would win DHT and um, Black or Cold. Um, Black Hold a little bit 50-50, but we were also gambling to obviously win any of the other maps. So Throne was more of the end thing, and no one wanted to have Throne as the last map of the series, so we <laughs> abandoned it. Yeah. Yeah? Because we're like, man, that map is a little bit shit, so stuff can go wrong, there's like... It's just not a nice map. I don't know if the other two guys agree, but that map is just not so fun to play compared to the other ones, uh, at least. I think I love Throne. I'm actually sad oh, really? that we couldn't play it. Yeah, <laughs> like okay, we had okay. a really cool tech. Like we were not doing a pull with the monk at the, at the end, and uh, sadly we couldn't show the strat. So mm, interesting. It's Orky, just Throne hater. Uh, that was, that was a little game between. It kind of depends. Like I, I, I really. We were to play a lot of moments where I'm like, God, I, I hate this because there's so many times where I'm trying to like place my sigils and it just goes on like a random coral or like a ceiling. Man, I, that, that was really frustrating. Also, aggro can be kind of annoying. I'm sure a lot of you guys have I was gonna heard ask. the same from your tanks. Yeah. Like, my God, it's been so frustrating sometimes where like I'm just gathering a pole and then somehow adaptive swarm rips aggro and my cat healer dies or like... You know, a, uh, a helm enchant procs and boom, someone dies, or like someone with just some random proc just like rips. And it, it's been really annoying. Yeah, so, how has this tournament been just only playing this one tank versus your other past experiences of MDI or TGP playing a different tank spec? Is it just the aggro problems that are the biggest things? Well, for me specifically, like it, it's both the aggro and just having to like do everything like no normally it's a little bit more spaced out right but like having to yeah, like yeah. lock down and cc all the mobs and like you know it, it just feels like it's a little bit too much i would rather per i would prefer a little bit more where it's like a little bit more about tanking and like a little bit more spaced out where i have my utility spread across my team mm -hmm. but I, I don't know how you guys do your ccs i kind of just like so we'll stop everything and then I have our mage back up, sometimes our healer back up. Like, what do you guys do for AoE stops? Are yeah, usually it's teams? like the whole team like doing CC, but this MDI was mainly the Vengeance DH doing everything. And then Warlocks coming in with the Blasphemy Stun, Shadow Fury to back up, and that was enough most of the time, yeah. Yeah, sounds similar. Yeah. So as you guys were getting ready for this tournament, Mirrors, was there anything uh, you kind of talked about how, a little earlier about how everything felt a little bit different? Was it some of the dungeons, some of the potential like RNG? Um, did everybody kind of come in with the same mindset? What was kind of different about this tournament for you guys? Uh, I mean, I don't necessarily know what's different. I think the practice also were different. That That is for sure. But uh, I think apart from that, nothing was too different apart from the dungeons, of course, being there that I played already, I don't know, three tournaments, four tournaments. I don't even know. I swear, I, like Atal and Vakrist, I've played, I think, at BlizzCon. I played at Sydney yeah. and then another tournament after as well. And now again, I'm like, <laughs> they, they, legit, on, on, when we got Bullstring Vakrist, I think it was, mm -hmm. in the first cup. I, I whipped out our BlizzCon route from 2018 and I was like, man, it's basically it's almost the same, yeah? Like, of course, mobs yeah. are a little bit different and stuff, but we're like, I mean, can almost run the same route. It would be the same from five years ago. I'm like, I don't know how I feel about it, but it worked, I guess, yeah. I was going to say, because yeah. you guys were the only team that went right that I saw in Waycrest in the grand finals, in the, in the, in the finals here. Oh, yeah, no, that was a new cook, actually, but uh, yeah. it was more about the Bulls. It, it was just um yeah the the going right in the grand finals was of course because of sanguine and um mm -hmm. 
we just wanted to do a real big pull and it was a lot of time safe. And I think how we played Sanguine um, was really good. Like we had a really good plan for Sanguine and I don't know if other teams had the same idea or whatever. But it was basically just, for example, the Shadow, like me in my case. I was just doing no damage. That's the best play <laughs> always, yeah? Because Shadow Crash is grief. Because you just throw it, eight targets dotted, they die at random, yeah? So I just decided, I just dot all targets individually that are important. So I just stood on Ral, I dotted five Gorgeous, three Stewards, and then the boss, and then I sent cooldowns. So everything dies at the same time, the Stewards die, the Gorgeous die, everything is just a nice line of Sangon, and that's it, yeah? I don't know how other teams handled it, of course, right? But there's a lot of ways, but uh, we had a nice Sangon strategy, that's why our pull on the right was actually quite, or always very consistent. Yeah, of course, sometimes a little bit of aggro issues, they always exist, but apart from that, uh, it was always quite good. Yeah, yeah Misty, tell me about how you guys approach some of those, some of the dungeons like Waycrest in particular, where you have to be playing so heavily around something like Sanguine. Is it a lot of times having those similar um, conversations with DPS to make sure you're focusing everything down equally? Yeah, usually it's just like you do the pull once, then twice, and you just, you just go again, and at some point you just find something that works and you just do the same every time uh, like damage wise um we actually had the really fast route but we went for a safer route doing one extra pool uh but yeah sanguine is just really really hard to deal with was, was that the <laughs> which dungeon actually ended up taking the largest amount of your practice time as you're going through it hmm Actually, I don't know. <laughs> Dorky, maybe you know, maybe you know? DHT, I think. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards DHT. Uh, this comp, there weren't any like specific outliers compared to, or uh, grand final, global finals compared to the cups, because like during cups, there was both during Waycrest, and that that was really rough for us. <laughs> I mean, maybe we spent a little bit too much time there trying to figure out like what to do, but. Yeah, for global finals, probably DHT. Yeah, uh, it's definitely gotta be like DHT and Waycrest. And how did you guys feel in general about having the key levels stepping up for finals, for global finals, and also having to just have more dungeons? I think there's only, what, three dungeons that were being run without any healers whatsoever. How was that sort of adjustment to the additional key levels that you had to go through in uh, group stage, Maystein? Um, this time it felt fine, like we didn't mind the key level really, like I didn't really look at the key level, like everything just dies anyway and you just die anyway if you stand in AOE, so uh, this time it was, it was fine. Um, and I didn't mind playing 4 DPS, I think it's actually quite fun in some keys, mm. not all of the keys, but <laughs> <laughs> like BRH 4 DPS, I think it's just a blast, it's just fun. Mm. Wait, what do you think about 4 DPS, Dorky? Ah, I mean... <laughs> I think it depends on who your healer player is. Personally... Do they get more or less I, annoying when they switch to DPS? I, I would say more annoying for sure. Oh, no! <laughs> you know, like, I didn't sign this person up to be a DPS, right? Like... So, so you'd like to have a sixth role, like a like a, a sub, like a fill in. That would uh, be, be awesome. Like, man, <laughs> imagine if we could get another amazing DPS. Yeah. No, but uh, it's definitely a much bigger learning curve when you throw a healer into a DPS role, and because like it's not just about your healer learning to play an extra class, but it's also about like the entire team adjusting around not having a healer. Like figuring out how to survive and like figuring out how to deal with specific poles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's definitely. For... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, because like I, I was gonna say, like I feel like a lot of teams probably wouldn't have signed up for this if they knew they were getting into four DPS. That's how yeah, I like see your, it. Yeah, like your two brand new you know teammates who are fresh into this. Do they have a huge adjustment period to like not have anybody to heal them? Yeah. <laughs> It sounds like there's more going into it, but they're just like the, the crying for heals and then they realize there wasn't one there. Okay, good talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> where, where your team is looking for the healer and then realizing they weren't there. It's, I'd say practice. it's a little bit, it's a little bit different from that. Okay. I, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and say this. I feel like the healer dies more even when they're playing DPS. <laughs> no, I 100% believe yeah. that. Right. Because whenever I have DPS, then I'm just like so intently focused on my rotation that I just like block out everything else and just yeah, yeah. go full DPS brain. I, I don't know that. if it's the same for you guys. I, I would imagine probably not, but it absolutely was for me and my team. I I don't know. I am not exactly sure, but I can say I really dislike for DPS as a concept in general. Mm. I think the idea is nice. And if it's one dungeon, it's also nice. But if you end up looking at the pool and I can see half the dungeons being played without a healer, it's really weird to me. If you have one dungeon, like, I don't know, Black or Gold, Atala, whatever, and you're like, okay, 40 bears, you know, kind of cool, can do some cool stuff, 40 bears and whatnot. But if I go at every dungeon, I'm like, it's, if it's not bo bursting, basically, I'm like, yeah. or if there's a disparate mechanic, oh, let's play 40 bears as kind of, I, I think then it's weird, yeah. So um, I think that's my biggest issue with it. And th this tournament, or th this in general, was again, some of the days felt really weird because, of course, we have been always playing most of the time with the healer. And then you go into a day, and I think it was more prominent in the cup. We ended, I think, Ken ended up playing no healer in two out of the three days. It was just 40 pairs on two out of three cup days. I'm like, yep. That's kind of weird, right? Uh, I, I don't know. So if it's one dungeon, I'm okay with it. Otherwise, I think it should be a little bit more regulated. Or I, I don't even know. Uh, but. Too many 40 pairs keys feels a bit weird to, to me personally, but I know a lot of people have different opinions on the 40 pairs or not, so... so what do you think yeah, that I don't like do, it personally. What do you think they should do to regulate it? Is it, a, is it just making the hard set rule if, you know, defensives and off healing are so strong that it's possible? Or is it, do you think Blizzard needs to make larger changes like mid-expansion to like class design in general to prevent this? Oh, I think God, it's so hard to say. I mean, the easiest fix is to just yeah. put the rule in. You need one tank, yeah. one healer, easy. I think you know? so. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, it's kind of nice to have that like creative idea of like, oh, of you course. can pull off 40 for DPS. That, that, and that, for that's it, the yeah. thing, right? Um, right. I mean, the main issue is, of course, that always say uh, classes, like, even if you need to pick a class that is probably a little bit worse, but can do all the off healing needed to play 40 DPS, you would still play 40 DPS over a healer most of the time. I don't know. It's a really hard thing to solve. Um, right. in my opinion, because it all depends. Like this time, of course, it was again the god comp where you're like, okay, everyone is unkillable if you press any cooldown or whatever. And then yeah. we, we also had the, the tech with the orbital strike boomkin. We're like, oh, we basically have another, we have a healer and cooldowns as well. We're like, I mean, we can't really die to be honest if we press cooldowns, you know? And the healer wouldn't, the thing is at some of the pulls, Black Record is a good example, this archer pull, for example, if you set it up properly and we were playing the boomkin and shadow, right? It's set up. Legit, these two classes will save you more than when you have a healer in the team because VE or Vigil instantly tops someone when they, when they take any damage and this healer needs to set up or needs to ramp on every DPS to cover this. Where Vigil and the VE is a smart heal and everything just gets insta-topped and you're like, oh, I mean, that's pretty, that's, it's basically easier. Mm. And I think that's, I mean, that's probably the main yep. issue of 4 DPS, yeah. Um, yeah, that's how we felt as well. Like, if you play 4 DPS, you feel safer than playing with a healer and... Especially Rest to Druid, like Rest to Druid, they just don't heal. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, playing Rest to Druid is so frustrating. I swear, it's like, oh, you know, like we're dying, like can we get one heal? But like, no, but my eight globals for cat form. So, yeah, like, so Bunton wanted me to ask you about that, Dorky. There was, what was it, in uh, Throne of the Tides, right? A lot of teams were running yeah. Monk, but Drogo opted to run uh, Cat. I wouldn't even say Resto, he was running Cat basically the entire time. How did you feel about that pick? Why did why did he not go to Miss Weaver? So for that front of the times, like we didn't have a whole lot of practice, and when we like what we did practice before was with the rest of Druid, simply because of like Mark of the Wild and Roar and being able to get across the dungeon quickly. But yeah, I mean, like we had tech to pull stuff in around the dungeon into Azumat without a monk, so it wasn't like the biggest deal for us. But ultimately, we were slower than what Perplex put up and we were just like basically banking on them to make one or two mistakes for us to capitalize on. Gotcha. So that, that was, but otherwise I think every other dungeon Drogo was just playing like Resto Druid the, well, the times that he actually was.
In finals, I believe we had a bit of a difference between Mandatory and Echo, where Mode Mace Team was running with Rhett, whereas we were having Zelia on Druid. So what was the idea for like the, the comfort pick, or was it just you guys thinking it was gonna be a bit better to have that Rhett instead of the Boomy? So I think it was Atal in BRH. Um, mm -hmm. We had the Rhett instead of Boomy. Uh, it felt better, at least when we played. Uh, more of feeling, uh, Bob was nice. Uh, let's say on last boss, you get the swarm, you just bob the, the guy. Feels so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we just felt red was the, the better choice for us. Makes yeah. sense. Um, I know, I think it was Zero who was talking about there was like a bug going on with red aura. Do you guys know of like, is it just not proccing the extra damage boost in dungeons? Is that like another like negative factor for red going into the season? No, it just doesn't work on some abilities, um, like demonic portal, like the the portals, the dimensional rift, I think they're called, that the warlock spawns doesn't work with red aura increase, and maybe also some other things. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't investigate too much. Okay. Um, yeah, that's just some issues with red aura, I think. Oh, actually, this is a really good clip that we have going here. I wonder if we can go back a couple seconds, maybe like 10 or 15 seconds on this one. Uh, Dorky, you were talking earlier about some of the RNG. That we were having to experience with the the dungeon yeah. this was actually a really good clip from the black rook hold where i believe skylark just natty resets his stacks from the like rook spider and doesn't have to worry mm -hmm. about it and then i think now actually does go up to 20. yeah it's gonna be yeah, right yeah, as we this spell? no so, i think both both teams master spell yeah i think they both had mass no, spell yeah but i think skylark drops his around 15 or 16 stacks and then gets a dispel off onto him well, so, no, I mean, this poll is, like, pretty scripted. Like, for the most part, it's like, all right, you go up with Tank Trinket, and the Tank Trinket absorbs all of the Venom stacks, so you don't get Venom stacks. And then generally, when you get to the top, is uh, there's some RNG involved, obviously, where, like, you're parrying with uh, Vengeance Team Monsters, they have really high parry. Mm -hmm. But also, if you're playing, like, uh, Soulmonger, for example, it gives you a pretty substantial absorb shield, which helps a lot with mitigating the amount of stacks and because you're playing 4 dps the spiderlings die extremely quick so like by the time they're dead you can just mass the spell and it's pretty chill from there so i wouldn't say like this is like one of the examples of the rng-ness but there's definitely like a little bit okay i was just seeing when they were going through this pull side by side i think like skylark only got up to like 14 or 15 or stacks until like the master spell went off and then i think now got like capped on stacks for a while of just how much extra damage because that did end up rocking like now's cheat as an example like that was what i was mm. thinking of because then that yeah. later on triggered the the wipe that was going for the setup to go into the third boss right I, i'm not sure what exactly happened i would imagine like it's partly attributed to them having a boomkin like i don't know if it's the same for you guys members but like with a red paladin the red paladin just like deletes the spiderlings like you just slam your wake of ashes and all your aoe buttons and they just like die instantly whereas like a boomkin probably has a little bit more of a ramp time and they probably live for a little longer mm, i mean it's actually not yeah i probably read this a little bit more but because we were playing the two minute boomkin right yeah. um it was basically the same as a red to be honest yeah he sent the orbit to strike boom and uh, boom. Yeah, almost everything sense, died yeah, yeah. um it, it was obviously a little bit sore, right? I think the, the the biggest difference between the two classes, because we spoke about it earlier, is that we think um, that Druid is way better for the overall dungeon speed, basically, uh, because it does uh, more boss damage than the Red, basically, and has really nice on-demand burst AoE, if it can be capitalized on, let's say. Um, and also has Roar and Mark of the Wild, what is like very consistent for the whole dungeon. Where obviously the paladin brings some other utility, like Mason said, like Bob, Sack, some good Orpheus. Like they, if if something goes wrong and like the Shadow Priest and the Red Druid have to start regrowing and healing, is a little bit more tilt than when the Red Paladin presses one word of glory, of course. Wake of Ashes um, is also really nice in this key. I true. think you can stun yeah. any mobs. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah, yeah that, that's also true. Wake of Ashes in it's, it's particularly in Black Rifle is really good. Yeah. Um. Yeah. No. But. Uh, yeah, basically that was kind of our idea. That's why we picked the Druid. And uh, that's also why we didn't do this outrange threat kind of thing, I guess. I don't know how to say it, you know, where the tank gathers, gathers up all the mobs and we yeah, stand away. Uh, because we had the Boomkin and Shadow and with Vigil and the, the Orbital Strike, we basically gathered everything. We popped cooldowns and we were unkillable for 15 seconds and then everything died. 
and uh, here yeah, in the finals, it, that, yeah, yeah. yeah, and here in the finals was a little bit disaster because we killed mobs and then there was no proper CC on the spites. I was getting ran down by the spites. I was like running around the pillar, and I think Mike also was standing in the spite getting hit, and then he was running away and then we tried to call for heals and we want to heal him he was lying of sight of ken and me and we were both like bro where are you and then he died complete disaster then the md was late from me and then robin procked on the g death like on uh... the on on the spider link stacks right before it was a big disaster but generally that pull is quite good yeah they, normally that, let's that's say. mainly why we did the outrun strat because of spiteful we just put a ring of frost in between and we're like kind of chilling uh, and also all the archers jump on sky so the tank instead of any dps so they were like more stack and uh, oh yeah better at least for dps I, yeah i mean I, I agree if you had a red i think you need to do that threat because we had vortex and typhoon right so it was really mm. easy we got we grouped everything for vortex and it's basically the same result yeah vortex and we had the good. typhoon for for spite but if we would have had play or if we were playing red we also had to do the outrange threat for sure i mean that's by far mm. the best uh, on to run up on yeah Yes, I want to ask to. Oh yeah, go for it. Uh, was there any reason you guys chose for mass barrier over mass invis? Because I felt like mass invis would have been pretty big there too, in terms of. Uh, um... Wait, for what? What do you mean? For um. A barrage. Yeah. So, so yeah, for like, so you don't have to use a fear sigil to do it for the skip. Oh yeah, I mean we just chose it for. I mean. The thing is, it was never an issue, actually. Uh, we, we always had the fear sigil, basically, for the skip, so it was always fine. It never happened in practice. And then it happened in the Grand Finals where Robin didn't have a fear anymore, right, for the snap. Um, but, I mean, it was just the safety because it was just this one thing where we're like, why would we need uh, mass invis for one thing if we can have mass barrier for the whole key? And especially with Restro Druid, um, having like the, the mass barrier in the very end of the last boss, right, where it's like 5 million absorb or whatever, yeah. was like one of the main things that was really OP for, for us to pick mass barrier on. Yeah. Or if you got the double explosion on first boss, then we also use mass barrier, so to survive. Mm, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, that one is a good good bug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's like another element of RNG that I was talking about. Yeah, this boss is just blowing up two times, that's so cool. Mm-hmm. So when you guys are getting into a, a lot of the tech, and specifically Black or Cold was the one that stood out the most to me, when you start practice, when you start setting these things up, in particular mirrors, like some of the snap pulls, how are you guys putting these ideas together of like, hey, maybe we're going to be able to snap this. How do you get the idea there? How do you get the practice there? Do you guys do like a, like a dry run, like a pacifist run of like, let's see if the tank can just grab everything together and make it work. Then we wipe and then we just try to do it again. Uh, I mean, yeah, kind of, but I mean, mainly the idea of snapping and stuff just comes with years, years of experience, I would say. You look at the, the mobs and you're like, I mean, these are cool mobs to snap, let's just try it. And then, you know, after years and years of snapping and how the game works, how you snap efficiently without them bugging out or whatnot, and then you test if these mobs are good mobs or not. <laughs> And oftentimes they end up being bad mobs, but this uh, MDI, I think, around the mobs were actually quite good in a lot of dungeons and they were nice uh, snap uh, targets yeah um and then we just try it out and i mean b based on all these factors we kind of know what to do and what the ideas and then um we tried and it worked yeah for example this black record tech we already had uh, before we even started practicing for the um no it was right after time dress basically it was in between the um, the yeah it was in between time dress and the cup basically where we found out about this black rook and we didn't show it in the cup, of course, um, because we were just and there was no need, basically. Um, and we were surprised that Novanize did it, actually, because we did show how the Sigil summon works on in Rise, right? In the, um, uh, how's it called? In the cup. So we're like, surely people will do this more often. And we were actually quite surprised that no one did the Black Oak Hold um, snap, yeah. And so you kind of just kept it in your back pocket for as long as you can. Yeah, yeah, to be, yeah, to be able to break it out. Yeah. Okay. And so when you first started practicing, did was it just clearing through the dungeon up to that point and then just iterating on it over and over and over again to be able to see if you can group all of these things together, get it consistently, and then try to put together a full-fledged run? Like, how are you breaking down the sort of like micro of the practice of like, let's see if we can get this really big pull done? Or are you running through the entire dungeon for speed? 
Uh, no, of course. I mean, one of the things Doggy mentioned earlier as well was that snaps need to be consistent, and that's one of the main things. And of course, we do a run, and you look at it, and you're like, okay, we snap these mobs, and then you try snapping them a lot of times, and if it goes good all the times, then it can still go wrong somewhere, or every time, right. I think. That's always the case. But if it goes good, like, 20 times or whatever, then it's a good snap. Um, and that's how we do the snaps as well, right? You look at the situation, you're like, okay, does this make sense? Like, for example, I, uh, what was a, what is a bad example? Actually, I think... No, the, the, this time around, there was no bad examples, but in previous uh, MDIs, there were, like, bad examples. Oh, oh yes, no, Atal. A, Atal, yes. I, I, the exactly. middle pack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. The, the, middle, the middle pack of Atal was a very particular thing where we found out how to do it very, very, like, always. We did it, like, I don't know how many times, but we did it very always work. Um, and then, of course, one time in the cup, I think, in the very first match, we changed something because we did something wrong. Yeah. And then it fucked up, yeah, sadly. Mm. Um, but in general, it, 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 a, a tile middle pack, very dangerous to snap, has a lot of issues and a very weird interaction with everything that's going on. R really horrible mobs. And most of the time you would say, no, we don't want to snap them. But I think it was too good to pass out on for any team to do it, if it was um, Tyrannical, because it just died passively and was so much count. Um, so it was actually quite nice that it was fortified in the um, in the global finals, so you didn't have to snap that pack because it was really horrible experience every time. Um, and I think every team had the same. When Mason knew instantly what was bad example. Yeah, like that pack is just yeah, the first reset. So I love that. Like both both reset pack resets. We had sometimes both dinos come down, the lady go back up, and then we had the lady upstairs, and then we had <laughs> yeah. sometimes the lady stayed down, both dinos were down. Sometimes we had two swords up alone. Like we had, I think I saw everything on that pack. Yeah, uh, and a big disaster. So the um, worst. Like th this pack really bad, but all the other packs in these dungeons, I think this is like behavior of old mobs, like good old times, uh, are just like able to snap. Yeah? And newer dungeons, it's always really hard. I think Azure Vault, where we were snapping in the first MDI as well, where we lost against Mandatory mm -hmm. in the match as well, <laughs> because two mobs didn't snap. Th those mobs, very dangerous right. to snap. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but of course, sometimes I think that's the main issue if snapping is. Let him snap or <laughs> yes, and, and then it's too good to not do right because you look at a snap. Best example is that tile middle pack. You look at it yeah. and you're like, okay, if we don't do it, we lose. I don't know a minute almost. It's like complete disaster of a run. Uh, so your baseline lose if you don't do it, but you will also baseline lose if you snap and it doesn't work right. And the boss resets, for example. So it's a horrible trade-off. And uh, this time around, I think it was really good because everything worked. Um, oh, everything was kind of consistent um, <laughs> uh, compared to previous seasons where it was right. uh, very horrible, let's say, in, yeah. in some dungeons. Yeah, yeah I wanted mean, to ask you guys, do you guys have that issue in a tall downstairs with the auger? You know, like when you snap the two auger with the two honor guards, do they just oh, evade? And they start and casting and they evade. They start casting, yeah. Mm. Yeah, we had that uh, sometimes. Uh, but we found out that if they snap and insta start casting, then it means that they evade. So we just say line of sight and that's usually fine. Mm, I think we died yeah, to that awesome. once in the cup, like the group stage, and we never did that mistake again. Yeah, we just don't play those on Reza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we, we fought hard right, about yeah. it. Yeah, like we were like, do we do this? Like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, and we just didn't know what to do. And because like, you know, yeah, obviously we could have played with Priestess, but then we felt like it was slower and like, yeah, we, we weren't too sure ourselves. And so when you guys are practicing, where, where do you find that like sort of doubt in the back of your mind of like, okay, we can do this strat. Okay, we like you were talking about before mirrors, we're, we're able to do this snap, but it's going to cost us uh, a minute if we don't do it. But there's also the consistency issue. When you guys are cooking up strats, where, where do you kind of hit the point of this is too ambitious to pull out in like cup play or we're going to save this for global finals? I mean, to answer the last, to save for global finals, I mean, it's quite obvious. I think you would save as mm -hmm. much as possible uh, because obviously you never know what other teams know, say, right? Um, in terms of snapping, it's quite detailed what is sometimes going on. Um, so showing it is very, is reducing the other team's practice time by 80%, I think. Right. And your own is obviously still there. So you'd spend 10 hours on a snap, and I don't know, we show the black record snap, and it will take. I don't know how long it t took teams one to hour. learn. <laughs> like really? One hour. It is really easy, right? If you see yeah. everything, if you know the spot of the gateway, uh, the the summon or whatever, and you know the spot of the snap, it's really easy, right? 
Um, so holding always, and I think the the other thing, of course, that you asked about how to know about it. I think it's a, again a question like Olia. It's just experience. You just go into a dungeon and you know, aha, uh -huh, these are the things uh, that you want to snap or whatever. And it's, like I said as well earlier, it's really weird to have this many old dungeons because all of these experience, I think everyone here in the call knows Atal snapping these mobs and the middle pack. And this was done. This was done legit. I, I five five years ago. I think the first MDI I played, uh, I did this already, and it was basically the same thing again, right? Um, and you just, the Blizzard keeps updating the mobs, but the, the, you will always find a way to break them somehow if they don't rework everything, I, I feel like, yeah. And then it's just experience if it's the working The jerk charge was uh, painful at the start to like, yeah, find true. the spot. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was that the was best. They, they, they sure. changed it and everyone was like, man, not worth it. And like, uh, how's it called? Like, uh, we can't uh, we can't line of sight them anymore. They always charge and then, I don't know, how long did it take? We a actually, week or something, and the whole world knew about the new spot uh, again, yeah. Because of that, like, we didn't knew the spot, and we tried to cook, like, a right-side route because of the drug charge. We, like, we, yeah. we <laughs> couldn't deal with it. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I, I hate it. practicing at all. It's all so oh. annoying. <laughs> no, the, the right route is actually really great in Atal. You select it at MDT, and you just have 10% less count or 15% less count, and then you just unclick everything again because it's useless. <laughs> it's crazy. It's actually an amazing cool. route. Like I, I also wanted to do a right side route. I'm with Mesty. It's actually because... good cook because we are playing Boomy, dotting totem on the way, and then keeping dots up with Tafel. So we actually get the count of like the like everything. Oh, I see. <laughs> I mean, that's we... interesting. I, I like the idea, we but I mean, <laughs> yes, yes. In reality, right? It's a it oh, this right side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so so I wanted to ask you guys about practice. How much time do you guys spend figuring out dungeons and then like finally being able to consistently run them? Like, do, do you guys finish dungeons pretty quickly and then just move oh, on to the next one? Or? It was really fast this time for us. Uh, usually it's like two days before like the actual match. We start to like redoing every key. But this time, yeah. like, it was kind of insta. Like, we insta start doing rotation of every key every day and complete the key really so like like even like just like a week before it begins group stage was a bit different but yeah for global final we yeah, yeah, global it global. was uh with insta did like every key every day and complete that, that, that key did you go like in order just right down the line of like we're mm -hmm. just going to set up a strat for this this dungeon this dungeon and then you get to ever bloom you're like we're just banning this dungeon for the for the rest <laughs> of it we're not worrying about it and then we're yeah, we... oh god, god. We oh, with, with the same for you. Didn't really change much the route uh, from group stage at least. Mm. Was it the same for you as well, Dorky? Nah, no. For for us, it's the complete opposite. We we are like terrible at every dungeon, and then like it takes us like a day or two before the actual matches where it starts to click, and we're like, oh, okay, so like we just got to do this, and then we start running with dungeons. What do you think was the most tilting point for everybody during practice? Like, what was it like a dungeon? Was it somebody always like waking up late and being late or something like that? What, what do you think was the most frustrating thing as we got as you got started with global final practice? I think having someone coming late is like always the case. Like you always have that guy coming five minutes late, ten minutes. Who is it? <laughs> that is it? guy. Who is it? Can be anybody. Indeed. Like every time you wake up, it's like coming ten minutes. Can be anyone. Oh, okay. mm. <laughs> Can be anyone. Like that every time. Very... <laughs> Mason, that, 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 that that's the wrong answer. Yeah. You know you know that's exactly who's late yeah. every day. Yeah. That yeah, you, you know. Really yeah, you, you just <laughs> you definitely have someone it. in your head, right? <laughs> what stage? Wait, what about what about you guys, Rivers? <laughs> well, I'm guys. I'm always on time. No, but right. uh, like you, we, you got I, food ready and everything for Twitter. Oh, oh, of course, of course. No, but uh, jokes aside, we. Are, I mean, of course, I think someone will always come late. And if you play in a team for longer, let's say, and I got Messi and me, we have the experience to play with the team for longer. And then you, at one point, you know what's gonna happen. You know, you set the time 2 p.m. You know, yeah. 2 p.m. is not gonna happen. To be honest, <laughs> yeah. like you go on 2 p.m. You're in team speak. You see two out of five members or something, and you're like, ah, it's okay, yeah. Um, or you see 2 p.m. and you look this code, you see three offline. You're like, mm, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, so I think everyone got used to this uh, for us and the team, at least like after playing for, I, I think, like five years now. So we're very used to whatever we have going on. Um, yeah, I know. But uh, 
I think that's the standard, yeah. Is someone coming late or food break being extended or... Oh, yeah. Uh, or like food a... break, food delivery at the door. Yeah, yeah. Food, I think <laughs> All food right, delivery. All right, I guess the break. <laughs> and then also, like, some, some things is uh, the... Um, how do you say it? The time, ma not management, but the time ideas what people have for long things take, yeah. Delivery coming, I need five oh, yeah. minutes. In reality, mm -hmm. that is not five minutes. That is 10 to 15. Or, guys, I, I go to the toilet. That is not two minutes. That is five minimum. Like it, 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 it's always the case. It, it's uh, it, all of these things. And when I put break five, let's say, and in reality, everyone a little bit knows it's break ten. So I took both break five. The person goes, and I put break ten basically. Yeah. Um. I, but all of these things, I think, is very, very normal. Let's say, yeah, because food delivery two minutes that is never gonna happen. Like I don't know in what country some of this, but food delivery two minutes. <laughs> Then the food needs to be in front of your door already. Otherwise, it's not going to be two minutes. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's always fun. Yeah, and like you were talking about, when you're with a team for such a long time, you're also doing Race to World First. You're kind of just around people all the time. Do you ever really need, have a moment, Marez, when the, the tournament season's over, the Race to World First season's over, where you're like, I just need a break from these people? Or are you guys just I such mean, good friends that you're like, let's get back on and let's start playing? I mean, I personally don't. I, not, I don't think that's really the case that we need a break because I mean, I, we're also rated today and we rate tomorrow as well. And we're rating with them as well, right? Yeah. Um. So it's it's nothing for for me. But of course, it's more like a, how do you say? It also depends how you feel or how you finish or whatever. Like uh, yeah. we w we had planned to do high keys. I don't think that's gonna happen anymore. I don't have motivation. I I will not play. Oh no. Like. I, I, I was like, I, I wanted to play high as a team basically after MDI, but now uh, how it all went down, so I think I'm not, I'm <laughs> not gonna play a person here. Um, so yeah, I think it all comes down a little bit to the over situation of the sure how, how it goes. Yeah. Darky, you're not doing high keys. Uh, I don't know. I mean, so my team, they're not really like interested in high keys, so. I can't really say they're gonna be want to like I, I would want to do high keys, but I'm pretty sure they're not gonna want to do high keys. But also, I, I mean, I'm sure it's like very different for Mirrors and Mace team because you know they've been with their team for a while. But I need a goddamn break from my team, man. I need to get away from them for a good This is what they call MDI prison. Like yeah. <laughs> after you've been in prison with these guys for so long, you, you got to get the hell away from them for a bit. I should have just asked you the question then. <laughs> I mean, it's a very common thing with uh, a lot of MDI teams. Like, I'm sure that's why you see a lot of MDI teams. They like are around for a bit and then they kind of just like dissolve or like they stop doing MDI. It happens a lot. Had one but season definitely not for that teams that had been around for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and like they were saying, you know, it does take a lot of time to be able to get to that point to be able to compete. I mean, Maystein, for your team, you've had people like Skylark who have been around since the very, very beginning and having to sort of commit all of this time together over, I mean, think about it. It's been years that you guys have been working towards this goal. How is it able to like keep the team together and keep them all motivated despite what's going on um, in people's real lives, what's going on in game, what's going on with your classes and how you're playing? How do you how do you I do think, that? I think it's important to like keep the same the same goal, uh, the same mindset. Um, and if you don't lose that goal, you, you you stick together, right? If you know that you trust your teammate, that they they have they they, they can do it, you just stick together and at some point it pays off <laughs> yeah it just sort of clicks what do you think was the does everybody have a favorite season of mdi this expansion i mean there was only one other mdi right in them so all right yeah true yeah favorite season of dungeon pools i should say i think the season one was quite fun mm. at least for me <laughs> i could play folded so I... <laughs> <laughs> it was, uh, that, that the blast feeling the, the number one thing <laughs> yeah I, I'm, I'm not even I'm not sure I think all seasons were kind of cool personally I, I, I don't, I'm not gonna pick a favorite I think there were bad uh, bad dungeons in every season um, that we played yeah personally Dork any thoughts any preferences for seasons hmm <laughs> Not a whole lot. I mean, I've only really played two MDIs. Like one of them was kind of a meme MDI, so only kind of like two serious MDIs. 
and I mean, I definitely prefer the older MDIs, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm more of a TGP player myself. Like, I don't know what you guys think. Do you guys prefer TGP or MDI? MDI, definitely. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I personally, I, I myself as a player, I think uh, MDI is a lot. I, I enjoy MDI more than TGP, but maybe format wise, TGP has something going on that is cool but also has a lot of other stressful points. I don't know. I think both have the negatives and positives, but I personally prefer MDI. Interesting. I, I know they did just talk about how they were going to have plans for season four. And so I, I'm really curious to see. I think it's what, Tuesday? They had the blue post? Or they're going to have a blue post to talk about which dungeons that we're going to be having. So I am kind of interested in that oh. because there's always oh, a lot of people exciting. who are preferring like TGP for its format, but I feel like especially for how long MDI has been going on, if the tournaments are this competitive, this insanely competitive that we have all the time, I feel like it just raises a lot of like the hype for at least for the audience, because I think this was like by far the craziest when we're seeing certain dungeons just timed with like five, 10 second difference or something going forward with it. I feel like in some cases you can kind of see the momentum shifting for like TGP where you're like, all right, I kind of know who like the top two is, kind of know that like the top three is going to be. And then it kind of comes down to like, okay, let's see if like who's going to be fourth, who's going to be like, there's going to be two teams that are vying for first and it's going to be whether they chest this dungeon or not. Do you guys like that sort of like spread out format where it's not, oh, they lost this dungeon, it's just immediately over versus like, okay, they have a couple tries to be able to match this level and then reach like this higher key. Well, TGP, I think it depends. Yeah. We don't have a lot of tries. Like uh, <laughs> the last TGP we had, we, we did one mistake and we lost the day one. So <laughs> oh, it's kind of bad. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. Rough. yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, especially uh, when it's early. Right, go ahead. Yeah. Exactly. I think TGP has something going on that is really cool. You know that you have actually you can make a mistake and still be in the tournament. I think that's just the issue of TGP being the first day being this crazy. Like if you do make a mistake in the first day or like you you have some, uh, I don't know, something go crucially wrong at the end of the key and then you can't catch up the time or whatnot. That's obviously a little bit of a flaw, let's say, of the system. But the idea of having that, for example, we you can just catch up, you can lose a map half an hour and you can still catch up technically by just playing insane on the next map and the other team will wipe somewhere is really good. Uh, where of course MDI is completely different where if you play your map and you mess something up and then you that's it and I think the one thing that for me kind of speaks like that is the viewing experience is very different from MDI to yeah. TGP because if you have these MDI matches that are super close I think it's way cooler to watch than TGP um, but if you have the the POV where team A does a good run Team B wipes on first boss in MDI and Team A still needs to play 15 minutes to complete the key and if they don't randomly decide to full wipe somewhere or like the other team has 20 deaths, it's really boring to watch, right? You just watch a team do the dungeon. I mean, that's cool, right? And then most of the time they have someone in the ear and it's like, guys, they have 28 deaths. Just do the pull alone. Yeah, you can You can also hardstone out or something, you know? You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's, it's always a little bit weird where in TGP you have like the constant watch and it's kind of nice and you can see some things but of course MDI is way more hype if you have two good teams compete and the, the match the, the runs are basically the same time next to each other yeah mm -hmm. do you think there's any specific like format changes that you guys would want for MDI in particular I mean when you're talking about one team wiping do you think that there should be like a GG button and they just like surrender at that point oh. Nah, I mean, never there surrender. Been, nah. <laughs> some dungeons where people have straight come back from it I, I know exactly what you're talking about where the majority of them yeah they, no, I, over. I mean, I think there can be a GG, but like sometimes, right? I think a good example was the perplexed DHT where they had like 21 deaths and they just tried to snap three times and it didn't work. I mean, at that point, even <laughs> if mandatory would wipe three times and I would come back in position of perplex, I would much rather FF the map and go next with a good mindset. But then you yeah, have that to point play you out. don't want to continue. Like, yes, yeah, like they would... <laughs> Uh, but most of the time, I don't think it, the FF button is like the thing, I guess. Yeah. Um, I don't know, MDI, change, MDI changes are quite hard. I think for Great Push, for example, it's way easier just making less dungeons first day or less time on less dungeons. So there is also a little bit breathing room or to be honest, t playing TGP is a lot more stress on the body, I think, or on every team because you need to sit in your chair for five hours and you need to blast right. hard for five hours straight. 
and these brakes that you obviously need to take, they're not brakes. I mean, I sit here and then we have a break. I sprint to the toilet, get grab a water, maybe on the way, if it's not already ready. And then you talk about the dungeon that you're going to do next. And there's no like, ah, you need to go away from the PC or whatever. So it's, it's very different when MDI, of course, you have your matches. And if you, th that's it. Yeah. I mean, you still have only one shot, let's say, but in TGP, you need to sit five hours full blast. And if that would be less or less dungeons or different, there's a lot of things you can do to make TGP less stressful for everyone, I think, and also less mm. punishing on the first day. That's it. Mm. Dude, I'm glad I'm not the only one who feels that way because I swear I've always said the same with TGP. TGP is like so stressful. It's like just five hours of like full focus and I'm so mentally drained by the end of it. Because yeah. like a lot of times when I bring that up, people are like, oh, it's only five hours. Like how hard is that? <laughs> but they don't realize that it's like five full on hours of like pure focus. There's, It's not like you just have small breaks in between or like, you know, there's something the chill going on. <laughs> yeah, it's all fake. Like everything's fake. It's just five full on hours of just like pure mental draining. Uh, yeah, it's definitely much more stressful. As for, as for like the MDI format, I, I kind of agree with mirrors. Like it's kind of boring whenever it's like, you know, it's just like one team wipes and it's like, ah, it's over. Mm -hmm. There's no like back and forth, which makes a lot of esports interesting. Like when you see like sort of like a back and forth, like say it's a League of Legends or something where like one team wipes the other team it's like oh here comes the team they're coming back like that's super exciting but i will say one thing that was like really exciting about watching echo is even when you guys made mistakes it was like really impressive to see the recovery from you guys like in the rise we were all like like it was like you know we were just doing our own little like watch party right we we're just watching and we we're like wait what's going on like 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 zalia is dead or something like that blah blah, blah. and stuff's happening and we thought it was gonna be over, but then like you guys just like recover so quickly and so somehow you guys are just like right back into it and you're almost at the same pace as mandatory again. And we were like super impressed with that. And this like happened with almost all the dungeons, like really, like even in Black Rook Hold, like even with that catastrophe, somehow you guys weren't even that far behind. And that's what made it exciting to watch, but that like almost never happens. And if there were some way to have like some type of back and forth, it would make it much more interesting from a viewer perspective. But I just don't really see how that happens. Unless there was this one interesting idea I had, like, what, what if you could just like fire offensive oh, no. abilities on the enemy <laughs> team if you're behind? You, you've heard this idea before, right, Jack? I thought that would be cool as hell. Shell. Yeah, Blue dude. Like, imagine shell. you're playing. It's like it's like you're playing Mario Kart, and you, you, like yep. if you're just like behind, you just like, get like a charge of like you just like stunned enemy team. <laughs> like just stun the enemy healer real quick for like two seconds that'd be amazing uh, uh, like for a competitor standpoint it'd probably be pretty frustrating but i swear from a viewer it'd be like so exciting and the casters would be popping off it'd be like oh no bears get stunned for three seconds in this super dangerous poet and now they're wiping it and now like they're, they're behind and then but wait like they use their offense on uh basically the basically is like you know struggling in this poet that'd be so fun wow i have an even better take maybe the chat could just vote on who to Yes, oh, that'd what, be what a... team to yes. get banished. Yeah, use their channel points and rede redeem like a stud or like a slow. Yes. <laughs> I, 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 like I, the I, I, chest. There's a community thing where everybody like has to like fill the, the chest or whatever with channel points to hit a reward. To be able to like fully unlock it or destroy it. Oh, we, we, we blue turtle shelled mirrors there. We got him. I just left, I guess. Yeah, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Nah. Did, did yeah. they already set that up in the echo chat? That was fun. yeah. May, maybe I, maybe I got the, the doggy hey, doggy. There we go. I, I'm, I'm back. Just I'm to back. Make an example of them. Be like, we yeah. could do this at any time. Nah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sounds great, doggy. If this happens, though, I might just uh, I ju I just don't have internet on the qualifiers or something. It's really <laughs> unlikely. So I'm, I, I'm not I'm not exactly sure, but this is a great idea. I will be voting on you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Surely oh, there's no. got to be like a GM command to like s stun somebody or like hodge them or something like that. We got to do like some kind of charity tournament with Blizzard so that it's all just going to be for fun for like everybody's charity of choice or something like that. Like no practice, random teams you go and then the chat starts stunning people at random as they try to do dungeons. I need this. <laughs> So another thing too, like what, what do you guys think about practice in MDI? Like, do you guys think it would be good if they limited practice where say practice only happened like two days before a cup or, you know, you had a much more limited 
TR access. Because I feel like right now there's just too much. I, I feel like you shouldn't be able to play when it's not your cup. I feel like you shouldn't be able to play during the actual tournament. Because I, I like you know one thing that's nice about TGP in my opinion at least is when TGP begins, they close off the dungeons right. Like you're not able to practice mm. during the tournament. Yeah. Like the, the difference with MDI is it's so weird. It's like, all right, we're done with our matches, straight back into practice, and then like you're suddenly just like doing practicing all the tech that everyone's discovered, and like you're trying all these different things. I don't know, like what do you, what do you guys think about the I amount think of practice? That's that's fine. Like one week of practice is fine as well, but it's everything else. Like because you practice before that one week, getting the maps, the fix. Like if they remove that, maybe it would be fine. And uh. Remove, I mean, uh, the work. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm a little bit of mess inside, but also, like, I, I think, for example, the one week instead of two weeks before Globus is great at the addition that you don't have to suffer two weeks to practice, like, for Globus, basically. I think that's that's a good change. But uh, I, I personally feel like that in MDI, uh, it's the beauty that you see a strat from someone and you can adapt to the next day by playing and practicing, right? Um, and in high keys, I mean, we basically, I, I don't know how you guys handled the TGP thing, right? But we did the same. We had the, uh, our retail characters ready. We had keys prepared, basically. <laughs> and we yeah. saw a strat being there, cool. And then we just went in the, the previous day and we, uh, or the next day in the morning or whatever on retail. And we just slammed the key and then we're like, okay, let's try this. It was, of course, not the same affixes and not the same level, but like the general... You can at least low. practice the tech. And, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we did the same. The yeah, yeah. And I mean, the same was also in... It was actually in the Gambit, like, long time ago in Shadowlands, I think, where we oh, did man. 32 Gambit. We had the Gambit on retail as well, like a 30, I think, or something. I was completely different class. Everyone was different classes, right? But we we're practicing a little bit the flow of the dungeon and how it's going to go with, like, the affix, with this vampire affix. I forgot the name of it. Um, but just generally practicing it outside and it's just another layer of uh, not so fun element that you need to do it on retail on your own character and you need yeah. a key as well and then like you lock on some random ass all that has like a I don't know gambit 20 and you're like okay let's do that I guess because you don't have a high key gambit I'm not so sure yeah but in general if they would limit the practice times you know so if they say tournament ram is open or you can log on per day 12 hours for example yeah Probably not a bad idea. That's it. Just yeah, give, I give give players an allowance of play time. That your account yeah, is now how. restricted. You're you're not allowed to play. Like uh, uh, IP uh, banned uh, past this hour. <laughs> that's it. No World of Warcraft for you whatsoever. No practice. Yeah, I, don't, I, I almost I don't wonder know. if your team could like sign on to like I don't know a certain hour, or, like six hour time block or something like that a day, just to, like limit it, but. It, it, it might be a little bit too hands-on for Blizzard to like, like clock in all of it. Clock in with the worksheet on yeah. MDI <laughs> hours. Uh, guys, team is logged turn in on. Your time yeah. sheet. <laughs> End of the uh, week. Make great. sure you turn in your timesheet before it gets too late. And before it gets too late for our podcast, of course. Make sure you ask any questions that you guys have out there in chat. If there's anything that we did not get to throughout this, be sure to let us know before uh, before time starts slipping away from us. Yeah. Oh, actually, here's a good one. Uh, this is one that Bunsen had given me before that just reminded me. What do you guys think, since we were talking before about practice, Dorky, what do you think about the really like the arms race of MDI, even TGP, of how difficult it is for somebody to really like get into competing at this level? Do you think like less practice is going to help, or do you think that with how much institutional knowledge that all of the top competitors have built up over, you know, some, for some people, half a decade, right? It, it's just a really high mountain for them to climb to get to that competitive level. Yeah, so I see it the same as the race the world first. Like, I, I just don't think there's a realistic solution for a up and coming team to just like be able to compete at the same level. There, there's just like too large of a gap, as you've mentioned. And I think like for any team to really come in and compete, at even like a similar level, they would have to spend way more time and effort and just expect to lose at least a couple of times before they can like finally get to that point. I mean, I, I can even say from like personal point of view, because like I've only really played in like two series MDS, as, as I've mentioned, right? And the first time we competed, it felt like a monumental 
skill gap that we had to like you know get, overcome it, it was like not just like figuring out how mdi plays because like mdi is like very different from yeah. live keys it's the skills don't necessarily translate over the things you do in mdi is like so different that whatever experience you had just doesn't really carry over and i don't know i think that's just like a problem with mdi itself that's how i've always felt about it something like tgp is much more accessible and yeah, I mean, it really just comes with time and effort yeah. and expecting to just like lose a couple of times before you gain the experience makes sense oh uh here, here's a good one from chat what team has surprised you the most throughout global finals They want you to say bald bandits. No, I think, I mean, for us, I think it was definitely bald bandits. Uh, Everboom was uh, was really good, I think. I mean, we did uh, play the same Everboom. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think in general, they were surprised that the Rogue Tech and Vakris was also good. They just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I was genuinely surprised. I didn't expect them to blast this much, basically. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all I can say. <laughs> I don't know. All right, what is everybody's hype level right now for their next expansion? War Within Hero Talons, positive, negative, meh? What do you guys think? I don't have time to look into it that much. <laughs> I think I will do that soon. But it's pretty cool Friday. from what I've seen. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I can yeah. say I have not looked at anything apart from Blood Decay. And yeah, I'm not hyped currently, <laughs> but it's fine. I will, I will get hyped when I read it, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I will see. <laughs> Yeah, kind of say I'm also not too particularly hyped, but you know, as time comes around and you know, like when we can actually see more of it, then I'd, I'd probably end up getting hyped. I mean, I always get hyped when we actually get to see the product and play it. Right, it's the difference. Oh, do you place the toilet, pa toilet, <laughs> toiler? Pa Come on, preheat. Toilet paper roll with a paper hang from the front or from the back? So is it like, is it like, uh, like on top? Um. Hmm. Like, I mean, I know the no answer, idea. but I don't. <laughs> like this, or or like or like this. Yes. No, I mean, no, like this. From, no, like from the top. <laughs> no, I. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's from the top, guys. Surely, yeah, right? I, like, I guess. Thank you. This, it this depends what finger you sense. use, right? To like. Does what that, finger? That, does, <laughs> does trans have like different ones? Where the, you go from. The like sometimes you have a thing that cover. The, the paper and the That's yeah, at the top. yeah yeah yeah, yeah at the top yeah and oh, then you open so it if, if you have that no. it's, it's better to like have the paper coming from the bottom <laughs> wait what <laughs> that's the opposite i swear because it's fine i'm not gonna judge. <laughs> okay but the real question is do you guys use a bidet uh i'm not i'm not rich enough for a bidet sorry but it's like 20 bucks attachment from amazon wait really wait, so, yeah, do you use a bidet cheap. Oh yeah, yeah. I've started using one like two years ago, maybe a little bit more, and it's life changing. I highly recommend. You gotta Yay. squirt water up your bubble. I, it is I, 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 I can't, I can't confirm. Toki, it is true, but I don't have one currently in, in this apartment. But at my parents' uh, place, yeah, my dad uh, has installed them. Top notch, yeah. Yeah, it <laughs> must have. <laughs> You just called Dor <laughs> Dorky at checkout. Awesome. Hmm. Uh, what what else is absolutely you know essential for your for your home? Electric toothbrush. Yes, <laughs> actually, my my life has changed in the electric toothbrush. I had to like break my my like teeth into it. I had to do like the the light setting first, so it doesn't like shred my teeth. And then after that, yeah, that and. Uh, I, I like to make my own coffee, so I have like glass pitchers of cold brew, and so I have like two of them I swap in and out, so I'm just always brewing coffee. Yeah. Anything, Mastine? Any of the gen hacks, um, tips, tricks? You should have like a big glass of. a uh, big glass to have a lot, a lot of drinks, and then I have like three or four for the full day of practice. Mm -hmm. And I just drink, you know. <laughs> That's the only thing, really. Uh -huh. Uh, okay, yeah, actual question. What what kind right. of M plus changes do you want for the war within? Oh, bring back seasonal affix. <laughs> yeah, there's actually a lot. Yeah, I, I yeah. yeah seasonal affix. I'm with Mistin, and in my opinion, get rid of all these not so fun affixes. Yeah, 
And also, I must say, after playing MDI once more, affixes that are based on combat timer just suck massively. Gone. Delete them. Because, <laughs> like, obviously, Thundering was a seasonal affix that's take it out of the equation, right? But Incorporal and Spiteful, uh, not by the other one called Afflicted. Yeah? Yeah. Just some affix, you know, I like the idea. But sometimes we do a run, I look and the lock, five minutes, no incorporal. Then I go next run, incorporal two, two, two. I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. And, and then you can't even practice it properly because sometimes you go into the situation, you skip, like in practice, you get no, not two incorporals for 10 hours yeah, in the same yeah. pool. And then sometimes you get two incorporals, worst possible time, two people, and you're like, what, uh, what is going on? Yeah. And then I, I, I think those affixes, obviously Thundering was in that pool, let's say, right? There was comp based uh, triggering, what was weird, but was okay because it was a seasonal affix let's say but these affixes just make dungeon competitive running really weird because like i said sometimes you go i know you do a vocal natal there's no uh, afflicted spawning for two minutes and you're like i mean it's kind of nice you know uh i don't know it's really weird and then it's also rng how many and i yes well it's like you do the dawn dungeons and it like lures you with a false sense of security you're like oh i can like go dispel you know whatever it is and then afflicted come out and then you have to like scramble and like heal and that it, like, dr it drives me insane. I, it does not I, I feel like any good sounds. Yeah, exactly. The, the thing is, I don't even mind it. But then also, you need to have like the Omega Brain Vika, right? Because Blizzard doesn't have an indicator for when these things spawn or how they exactly work. So you spend time making Vigaras and you look at the yep. Vigaras, then the, you debug the Vigaras. I don't know. I spent like this MDI, I spent, I think, a whole day and like another two hour Vigar meeting with one of our Vigar people from Echo. To make a, a to fix up the incorporate and afflicted vigara because they're just disaster how they work what they do like I wanted some special feature and I these affix is really weird I much rather have like some random affix that happens on death on the mobs it's I still hate it but I'm okay with it yeah i mean it's just like a universal thing where like nobody likes affixes i mean i don't I don't understand how they haven't just like done something about it by now i'm surprised that they aren't doing more for having people test affixes like they have like a pvp brawl which is having like hey there's like zero gravity and go pvp like i'm amazed that they're not trying to do something like that for m plus of like a weekly challenge on live to try out some affix and just like see if people like it and make it like time walking yeah. where you just do like two two or four dungeons of it see how you like it see how it feels and then give feedback on it and then you know you get like a heroic piece oh i Maybe swear like i thought reboot. that was what torgas would be like that would, yeah that would be nice <laughs> like too. a testing ground because i mean even if mm -hmm. if they sh uh, like shuffled around affixes enough i think people would be fine with it because if something sucks then they're like oh like in a month or two it's going to be gone you know like if you imagine the usual like 0 0.5 0 0.7 and then new season kind of like cycle it's like every what month or, or like every two months or something like that you go like 0.5 two more months you go 0.7 two more months you go new season it's like if they were shuffling in and out a couple affixes here and there just to test them at that point even if they suck they'd be like okay well this, this is a sucky affix week we already have those on live anyway right just like okay we'll go next at least we're gonna have hopefully some more bangers as we're trying and experimenting with things yeah I mean, I think the, the, like what Mason said, the season affix is just one thing that made dungeons cool. Because if, I mean, hopefully we see tomorrow or whatever when they announce season four that there's a season affix for season four. Because if I go back to Ruby again, of course there's no thundering, but man, why right. am I going back to that I hope dungeon? So. <laughs> and there is no season affix. I'm like, man, what am I going to do? It's just, uh, season affix brings like the, the joy of playing the dungeon at least, you know, and it's something new in the season. Especially if you want to reuse dungeons. If they don't reuse dungeons, I mean, sure, you can argue it's okay. But if they reuse dungeons and then you don't even have, and I just play Sangun no Kut and I'm like, I mean, yeah. cool, they changed Sangun, but the mob is still not going to move out of the Sangun part, right? <laughs> it's not really going to change anything here. It's, it's still just, Sangun uh, Waycrest. Uh, yes, yeah. it's, it's, it's very weird, right? These, um, these things. So Sang I think like the season affix, and they had so many good ones. I think Blizzard is maybe too scared. Well, I, I don't even know what it is. But they got so much backlash for the bad ones they had. They had such bangers. Like, of yeah. course, that they, like, uh, what was it? Infested was horrible. It was the first time they tried it, right? Everyone brings it up. I also bring it up, right? But it was the first one. I mean, okay, it was bad. But then the other three after, like, Reaping, of course, a little bit controversial, but still decent affect. Then they had the, what was it? 
the uh, like Nyalofa the pillars or whatever, banger affix. Then they had the um, the elements that you had to kill and you got like speed and stuff encrypted, really cool affix, you know, a lot to play around with and every team or every weekly key was also different. I think that was kind of cool, you know. Sometimes you join a weekly key group and they say, guys, we only kill Ur or we only kill the Ver one, oh, yeah, but you yeah, have yeah. Perma, perma movement speed on every boss and you were just perma running around, yeah. I didn't mind it. And uh, I don't know, so maybe they're too scared of this, but I would really appreciate some different flair in the dungeons, I guess, every time. Interesting. Okay, I think I got one more for you guys. What are your thoughts? Maystein, start us off. What are your thoughts on them adding solo QM plus? Good for the game, bad for the game, cool. fun, not fun? Uh, I would say solo queue up to a certain point, like maybe plus 20 to do like your weekly key. Sure, mm -hmm. why not? But then for high keys, nah, not a yeah. good idea, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Dorky, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It'd probably say it was least deep. <laughs> you just imagine the horror of just like bricking a 25 over and over and over again to people who don't know what's going on. I mean, I would love to queue up with my, I don't know, my random LL shame and all it, and then I get queued into uh, Asa Rogue and some. I don't know, some other completely useless class, and then you just, <laughs> like, first of all, you're stuck in a 30 plus minute key prison, yeah. Yeah? and you're like, I guess we need to make this work, and then you yeah. also have, aff I think solo queue and plus could only work in no affix, just if it's the dungeon, maybe mm -hmm. it could work, but Ooh, the, affix, the affix restrictions alone, you have in afflicted or incorporated on affix, and you queue in with three warriors, I mean, what are you gonna do, you look at the affix, you're like, oh, that's cool, right, let's move on, right, they go out. Uh, well, I, I will I don't say, know, right? though, <laughs> I will say it, it would be banger stream content. Like for me, as a, as a streamer, oh, uh, it would be amazing. Oh, yeah. Guess, yeah. Oh, it'd be oh yeah, insane. for sure. Especially it, as a it, healer, let me tell you. Yeah, it would just be like... <laughs> I, I would, <laughs> you know, like, it would be like... Of hell. Solo Q2 Masters today climb, you know, day one, day two. Right? It'd, be, it'd be a banger. It'd I'd be never fun. make I'm, it to Masters. <laughs> Stream, stream content would be endless for oh, sure. Man. Oh, yeah. But the, the fun would, the, I think, for the individuals in the key, not too sure, it would be banger content yeah. for them. <laughs> Three warriors afflicted affects. <laughs> I mean. Oh my god. But I mean, that Thanks. just uh, it just goes, it just like says a lot about the dungeons and the affixes rather True. than the whole like solo queue thing. Mm -hmm. the, the amount of coordination, CC, you know complications that are required for getting yeah, the comp requirements yep hey, because that's why people are doing it because it's going to be the easiest opportunity for them and you guys made this really easy for me so thank you everybody for joining me of course dorky mirrors congratulations once again maystein on your big win this has been the echo chamber brought to you guys by the elgato wave Big thank you to everybody for tuning in and make sure, of course, you are subscribing if you're checking us out on YouTube or following the live stream here at Echo Esports. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. Hope you all have a great night. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for having me.